My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, our daily life is guided by many rules and regulations. Some of them are written rules, some of them are traditionally passed on to us. When we walk on the road, we should walk on the right side of the road. When we drive a vehicle, we have to drive it on the left side of the road. We need to reach our office in time. The children need to get permission from their parents when they go out and they need to inform their parents if they come back late. And if we look to the Bible, there also we see some rules and regulations which are the guiding principles of the people of God. You should give due honor to the Lord your God and expect His holy name. We need to respect our parents and elders, do not kill and how do we need to celebrate some sacraments and feast. All these rules which are written or traditionally passed on to us or the family manners that we need to practice are not to restrict our life, it is to enhance our life and enrich our social relationships. The religious rules are meant for enhancing and enriching our relationship with God, our Master. In the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 22, we see many group of people coming and arguing with Jesus. Some of them argued and tried to put Jesus into trap by asking some critical questions like, is it not lawful to give Thanks to Caesar, or regarding the resurrection of the dead, Jesus gave them the right answers and he silenced them. Hearing this, that Jesus has silenced the Sadducees, some of the Pharisees came forward in order to test Jesus. This incident we see in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. Here we see that Jesus is asked by one of the Pharisees, a leader of the Jewish authority. He asked Jesus, Master, which is the most important commandment in the law? Understanding his intention, Jesus told him, This is the most important commandment that hear, O Israel, that love your God, your Lord, with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. And this is told that the second commandment is as important as the first one. That is to say, love of our neighbor is equal to love of our God. Because we cannot love God who is unseen without loving our brothers and sisters and our neighbors who are created in image and likeness of God. It is in our service and love to our brothers and sisters that we express our love to God. Dear friends, now let us consider how God loves us. It is not that we love God, God loved us first. How did God love us? In the Gospel according to St. John chapter 3 verse 16 would summarize how God loved us. Then we read like this. God loved the world so much that He sent His only Son. God loved us so much that He, he sent His only Son in order to save us. Jesus also would tell us that Jesus came into this world not to condemn the world but to save us. And how did Jesus manifest his love? We all hold our life something precious to us. Jesus, in order to save us, he gave up his life. He gave up his life in order to express our, his love towards us. God the Father, who loved us so much, he emptied himself and he sent his only son and he gifted himself completely to us in the form of his only son. And Jesus, 
also emptied himself completely and gave up his life and died a death of criminal in order to manifest the love of God towards us. My dear friends, when God loved us so much, we say that God's love is unconditional and God does not demand or expect anything from us. Is it true? For example, when we were children, our parents took care of so well. They were ready to sacrifice their comforts. They sacrificed everything of theirs in order to bring us up. When we were sick, they spent sleepless nights in order to take care of us. They sacrificed all their comforts and legitimate pressures that they could have enjoyed in life in order that we may come up in life. And if we lead a life the way we want, not caring for them, not respecting their words, will they be happy? Their sacrificial love will be rewarded when we live an authentic life and they good, become a good citizen. Dear friends, in the same way, the sacrificial and self emptying love of God will be accepted and rewarded by us when we live a life the way God wants us to live. Love is not a feeling. It has to be expressed in our action, in our service towards our fellow human beings and in our care for nature. Jesus told the Pharisee that you need to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you may ask who is our neighbor? Jesus also was asked by the Pharisee the same question that who is my neighbor? Then Jesus narrated the story of the Good Samaritan. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, the man who was lying on the road after beaten up by the robbers, who became a neighbor to him? A priest who passed by? No. The priest was belonging to the same clan, same religion or the person who was lying down on the road. Then a Samaritan came, who was supposed to have been an enemy of the Jewish man who was lying down on the road. But then he became his neighbor. How did the Samaritan become a neighbor to the man who was lying down on the road? He realized the need of the one who was lying down on the road and he was willing to cater to the needs of the one who was lying down. Who is our neighbor? Our neighbor and the friends are not determined by the physical proximity or closeness. It is determined by the one who is in need. The one who is in need is my neighbor. I am obliged by Christian love that I should cater to the needs of the one who is in need. It demands so much from us. Love is not expressed without any cost. Love is meaningful when it is expressed when with a great cost. That's why the love of Jesus and love of God is the greatest form of love. It meant everything for Jesus. He emptied everything, even his precious life. In the same way, when we express our love towards our brothers and sisters who are in need, it may require that we may spend our time with them. St. Mother, Mother Teresa of Calcutta would narrate a beautiful story how love became meaningful. Sugar got out. Then this news was spread outside. One of the teenagers came to know about this one and he went home and told his mother, Mother, Today onwards, for one week, I don't need sugar in my coffee and tea. Instead of that, give me that sugar to me and I will collect it in a bottle. And this boy collected the sugar which he supposed to have used with the tea and coffee that he used to drink daily. And at the end of one week, he collected so much sugar and he went to Mother Teresa and gave. And told Mother Teresa, Mother, see, I collected this sugar hearing that you in your institution sugar is over. This sugar I collected sacrificing the sugar that I supposed to have used during my tea. Hearing this, 
Mother Teresa became so overwhelmed and she exclaimed, Love always hurts and love until it hurts. My dear brothers, today's gospel when Jesus tells us that love your God and your neighbor, it demands from us and let us love until it hurts us.